guys, it's Marissa. I'm back for another booktube video. This time I am doing the A to Z book tag challenge. So without further ado, let's get started. A is author you've read the most books from. For me, that would either be Jim Butcher or Laurel K. Hamilton. Jim Butcher has two different series that I read. One of them is the Codex Alera series, which follows a boy named Tabby, and it's set in a magical land. And this is a swords and horses fantasy. I really didn't think I was going to get into it, but once I did, I actually loved it. Um, the other one is the Harry Dresden series. And that's what I got started on with Jim Butcher. Amazing. Absolutely love it. It is set in modern day Chicago and we follow Harry Dresden. He's a wizard for hire and he gets into all sorts of shenanigans. Jim Butcher is an amazing author. He has a killer sense of humor, very self-deprecating um, towards his characters, but it is hilarious. If you want to laugh while reading books, read the Harry Dresden series. Seriously. Okay. So the other author would be Laurel K. Hamilton. Now, I can't remember how many books by Laurel K. Hamilton I've read. I kind of guesstimated uh, at about 26, and Jim Butcher, I know I've read 23, for sure. Um, so Laurel K. Hamilton, I know I've said this in other videos, but I really don't like her anymore as far as her books because there's not much plot to them. It's just a lot of sex, and that just irritates me. I, I didn't read her for, for the romance, and I obviously don't really care about it. So anyway, so it kind of annoys me that I've honestly probably read more books by her than by my ultra favorite author. Anyway, moving on. B is for the best sequel ever, and I would honestly say that would be The Catching Fire um, by Suzanne Collins, The Hunger Games book two. I think it really expanded on the first book and it brought a whole new twist to it. I mean, you're following the same characters, but it just puts them in a whole new point of view and it really does advance the whole series. C is currently reading, and right now I'm reading three books. One of them is A Storm of Swords by George R.R. R. Martin. Um, that one I am listening to an audiobook, uh, City of Bones by Cassandra Clare, which is in the Mortal Instruments series. It's the first one, and I have not read those. I actually read the Dark Artifices series, and I know in my last video I kept saying the Mortal Instruments. That was not correct. I read the Dark Artifices series. So Mortal Instruments, I have not read any of those books, so that's what I'm doing right now. Um, and then also Allegiance by Veronica Roth, which is the third in the series of the Divergent series. That's a reread for me. Um, so D is drink of choice while reading. Usually it's water with my fabulous water cup and reusable straw over here. Jeffree Star, if anybody wants to know. <laughs> Not that anybody cares. Um, usually it's water, but if I'm reading in the morning, it's going to be coffee obviously, because who starts their day without coffee, you heathens? Okay, so E. Is e-reader or physical book? Um, I honestly love them both. I started off, of course, reading physical books, because e-books weren't a thing when I started reading, and then I really got into e-books in the last, the last, like, five, ten years, because I really enjoyed being able to have hundreds of them at my fingertips, and when I get bored of one, I can literally just click out of it and click into another one and it's right there. It's right at my fingertips. But since starting my booktube, I've kind of gotten back into my love of actual paperback books. Um, the only reason I don't really care a whole lot for them is because when I get really into a story, I kind of want to take it to bed with me and read, but because my fiance always goes to bed before me, I can't really have the light on while I'm trying to read. So that's where the ebooks are better because I can lay in bed and read without disturbing him. Because um, I turn the um, black background and white lettering on so it's not as bright and it's not as hard on my eyes in the dark. So if I had to pick, if you held me at gunpoint and made me pick, it would definitely be an e-reader just because, you know, I can carry thousands of books in, you know, a little, little itty bitty phone instead of having to carry a bunch of books with me. So, e-reader. Uh, F is for fictional character you probably would have actually dated in high school. Well, I wasn't exactly very popular in high school, so I didn't date anyone. But, however, had I had my choice, I would say Cedric Diggory from Harry Potter. Honestly, he's a cool guy, but he's also a sweetheart at the same time. He's not like one of those douchey guys you see. So I think, I think, yeah, I think I would have dated him. Uh, G. Glad you gave this book a chance. Um, honestly, I would have to say The Other Bowling Girl because I usually hesitated to give books that have movies a chance just because, 
I know I'm gonna have to watch the movie and I know the movie's gonna end up sucking <laughs> so and I wasn't at the time I wasn't really into historical fiction and the other Boleyn girl was honestly the one that drove me to get into it that's the book that got me obsessed with uh, the Tudor time period and Henry VIII and his wives so I would definitely have to say that one so if you haven't read it please go pick it up and read it do not base it on the movie because the movie sucked just FYI uh, H. Hidden Gem Book. That would be the Boleyn Trilogy by Laura Anderson. Um, what it is is it's an alternative historical fiction. So it was like had Anne Boleyn actually had a son and had Henry VIII never divorced, well, divorced her and then beheaded her. So in other words, Anne and her children are still alive. Um, she still has Elizabeth and she she has another son named William so it's an alternative history and it is it's really cool I mean you don't they don't really touch on Anne a whole lot they touch on her children more and the stories that surround them um, but yeah if you get a chance go pick that one up I actually found it at a discount store and I really really liked it so I ended up picking up the other two in the series I couldn't pick just one for this I'm a series reader I I usually don't like standalone books I want to get into a character, I want to follow them, I want to love them, I want to root for them, so I want I want a series. Um, and if it's got 20 plus books in that series, I'm golden because then I'll know I have stuff to do for a while, I'll be able to follow them for a while. Okay, so I, important moment in your reading life. Um, again, I think that would be when I discovered historical fiction. It gave me something else besides just fantasy to read. And so I kind of, I kind of switch back and forth between historical fiction and fantasy a lot. Um, so yeah, I, I guess I, I would have to say that that would be it. J is for Just Finished, and that would be The Last Academy by Anne Applegate. I did a review video on that if anybody hasn't seen it yet. Um, that book was pretty good. It, it was pretty darn good. There, there was a big twist in there that uh, really, really threw me for a loop. So K is Kinds of Books You Won't Read, Sci-Fi, and Westerns sci-fi and westerns. Not a big fan of either one of those. L, longest book you've read. Uh, that's going to be, I had to check my Goodreads for this too. Queen of Air and Darkness by Cassandra Clare has 912 pages. Honestly, while I was reading it, I really didn't think it had that many pages because I flew through that book. So, uh, M, major book hangover because of Harry Potter. No joke, every time I finish reading Harry Potter, I'm always like, what do I do? Where do I go? What can I read? Can I just start all over again? Can I read it all over again? And it always takes me a while to get into something else because I'm like, you know, I'm in that Harry Potter mood. I'm in that Harry Potter mindset and then it's over and it's like, Ugh, come on, what do I do with my life now? Um, N is for number of bookcases you own. Just this little beauty right here. As you can see, I literally only have books on my top shelf. Uh, o is one book you have read multiple times. Harry Potter series. I mean, come on. I, I read a lot of books multiple times. As a matter of fact, before I started Booktube, that's all I did was reread the books I already had. I really didn't branch out a whole lot. So I'm kind of hoping that Booktube helps me do that. Uh, P, preferred place to read. Outside in spring or fall, preferably on a beach. I mean, not in the sun, obviously, because red hair, pale skin, does not go with the sun. So, yeah, on a beach, on an umbrella, or with lots of sunscreen on. I mean, otherwise, usually it's in the backyard, sitting on the swing, just kind of enjoying nature and a book. Q is a quote that inspires you, gives you all the feels from a book you've read. This is from uh, Harry Draws Den by Jim Butcher, and it is, Most of the bad guys in the real world don't know that they are bad guys. You don't get a flashing warning sign that you're about to damn yourself. It sneaks up on you when you aren't looking. And honestly, this kind of hits me because you don't know, you know, when somebody's gone over to the bad side. It's like they can be great up until they make one little decision and then it just changes their life forever. Anyway, uh, R is for reading regret and I think that's not making enough time to read the things that I really enjoy. Uh, Sometimes I get I get caught up in school and work and I really don't read a whole lot or you know or I'm reading things that I'm not 
like trying to force my way through books that I'm not really enjoying and since starting booktube I've had to learn how to DNF things and just say you know what I'm not enjoying this what is the point in doing this if I can't enjoy it so I had to learn to put things down uh, S is for series you started and need to finish wicked series just talked about DNFing books those for the moment are DNF after after reading wicked uh, T three of your all-time favorite books Again, I'm going with series here. It's going to be Harry Potter by J.K. Rowling, Harry Dresden by Jim Butcher, and Mercedes Thompson by Patricia Briggs. If you have not picked up a Mercedes Thompson novel either, go pick them up. Mercedes is a coyote shifter, and she's running with a pack of werewolves. Really, really, really good series. There's um, 10 or 15 books out in the series. I can't remember how many right now, but there's a couple of offshoots also that are really, really good. So if you haven't read those, go pick them up. You unapologetic fangirl, I'm pretty sure you know throughout this video, Jim Butcher. I've said his name like 40 times already. Uh, so be very excited for this release more than all the others. That's going to be Peace Talks by Jim Butcher. It's been four or five years since Jim Butcher, Jim Butcher put out a book. So Peace Talks has long been awaited. The name has been announced for quite some time. So can't wait for that to come out. He's finally finishing up the last chapter, what I just saw on Twitter. So I'm hoping that this year or even early next year, we will have that book. And I am so freaking excited. So I can wait another five years for another book. <laughs> um, so W is worst bookish habit. Forcing my way through books that don't bring me joy. I said that earlier. X marks the spot. Start at the top left of your shelf and pick the 27th book. I couldn't do that because I don't have 27 books. Not physical books anyway. So I went through my Kindle and I chose the 27th book. And this is one I hadn't read. Um, it's called The Frame Up, The Golden Arrow Mysteries, book number one by Megan Scott Mullen. Okay, I haven't actually read this book. I think I got it free when I signed up for Kindle Unlimited because um, Amazon like sent you a list of all these books that you could choose one from every month. So I think I picked that up in there, but I haven't even opened it. It was just one that sounded the best. Generally on stuff like that, they don't offer you, you know, new releases by popular authors. They, you know, they're trying to get the word out there about other authors. So yeah, I, I haven't even touched that one yet. No, no plans to at the moment. Uh, why your latest book purchase? Um, that one would have to be Tales from the Shadowhunters Academy. I did just pick that one up. Uh, I think that was brand new. Yeah, that was a that was a brand new book that I just picked up at the discount store. I happened to see it and I was like, ooh, okay, I need that one because I'm picking up all of Cassandra Clare's books right now. So uh, Z is ZZ Snatcher book, the last book that kept you up way too late. That one I'm going to say, Christopher's Diary, Secrets of Foxworth by V.C. Andrews. It kept me up way too late because I wanted to find out if they told you what the hell happened at the end and then it didn't. So it really pissed me off that it like robbed me of sleep for no freaking reason. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, that was my A to Z challenge. Um, and I will throw all these questions down in the description box in case anybody else wants to do this challenge. I don't typically tag people just because I don't have that many followers. So, you know, if you watch it and you want to do it, go for it. And if not, I hope you have a wonderful evening.